سیکرٹری منسٹری آف ہیلتھ سائنسز ڈاکٹر روی چندرن مسز مورتی مسٹر سہائے گوپال اہنگر ڈائریکٹرز آف ڈفرینٹ انسٹیٹیوٹس اٹس این گڈ اپارچونیٹی ٹو ایکچولی میٹ ایچ ادر مور دین اینی تھنگ ایلس بیکاز موسٹ آف واٹ ڈاکٹر روی چندرن اسپوک ان دی لاسٹ ٹوینٹی منٹس دیٹ ہی ٹوک آئی تھنک از نون ٹو مینی ایف یو بٹ مور امپارٹنٹلی اٹس آلسو این اوکیژن ٹو ایکسچینج نوٹس پروفیشنلی ایز ویل ایز پرسنلی ایٹ دی آؤٹ سائڈ آئی ہیو ٹو پرفارم دی پلیزنٹ فارمیلٹی آف کنگریچولیٹنگ آل دی ایوارڈ وینرس مور سو ڈاکٹر گپتا ہو از بین ایکٹیو ایون ایٹ دس ایج اینڈ ایکچولی موٹیویٹنگ مینی آف دی یگسٹرس ٹو بی ایز ایکٹیو ایز ہی از دی ادر تھنگ دیٹ اسٹک می واز وین آئی واز لسنگ ٹو ڈاکٹر روی چندر اینڈ آلسو پارلی ٹو گوپال دیٹ ناؤ شی از سکسٹین ایئرز اولڈ دس منسٹری آف ہیلتھ سائنسز سو دی فگر ساؤنڈس گڈ سو فرام ایڈولوسنس ناؤ اٹس کمنگ آف ایج اینڈ آئی تھنک اٹ ہیز اے ویری آسپیشیس نوٹ ایز ویل because all the achievements that Dr. Ravi Chandran was talking about have happened in the recent times rather than in the last few years. So out of these 16 years, as it happens in the case of a youngster, the first few years of infancy go unnoticed, noticed mostly by the parents who have to bear the brunt of bringing up the child. But the world starts noticing only after 15 or 16, when you are at, in the teenage. And therefore, thanks also to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the kind of impetus that he's given to all the science ministries, including the Ministry of Earth Science, which he was referring from the ramparts of Red Fort when he spoke about deep sea mission. And I asked uh, the then Secretary of Earth Sciences, I said, now this has given us visibility because earlier, nobody in Delhi knew where on earth is the Ministry of Earth Sciences. And I was telling, when we were walking up the stairs, I was telling Dr. Ravi Chandra, in the last few days, I've heard many from other ministries saying, oh, you have a gorgeous ministerial office near Mausam Bhavan, because earlier it went unnoticed. So I said, now be guarded. People have started eyeing on your premises. They might tomorrow say, you have some extra land, we'll step in. And only last evening, somebody was drawing comparison with the, all the other buildings where it's the Shastri Bhavan or the Transport Bhavan and said, we never realized that for 16 years they were here. So your invisibility was a bliss in one way, but now that you have to become visible, it's a blessing and at the same time, it also is a huge responsibility on us, which we'll have to bear with. But as I said, this is one of the better times happening for the Ministry of Health Sciences. Both because the political dispensation is inclined to push us forward. And that's how from the Ocean De Development Department we have now graduated to this. And B also, the requirements at the global level are such that India in its aspirational journey of the next 25 years is bound to look for unexplored avenues. And when you look at the unexplored avenues, land is virtually exhausted. We are left with only oceans, which we actually ironically never looked into. In spite of the fact that we have one of the richest ocean resources in the world, and I keep often saying that, in fact, I was telling somebody the other day when we had, I think, the ambassador from, the High Commissioner from Australia, I said, you have a continent, you have an island, you have a country, but you don't have an ocean named after you. We have an ocean named after us, which means the forefathers who wrote all these scriptures and guns would have realized what huge wealth was there lying at the bottom of these seas. And now we are set in through all those missions which Dr. Ravi Chandran was hinting at, as the Samundaryan or as the ambitious uh, project of sending a person deep down. We have also taken a lead and made ourselves visible 
through various other departments or agencies associated with this ministry, like for example, Dr. Mahapatra's IMD, he has earned some reputation outside India as well in the disaster management predictions for Nepal, though not so much in Delhi. <laughs> now I leave him to think about that. <laughs> so, only yesterday somebody was asking me. So I said, uh, Dr. Mahapatra will explain how the wind disturbances are going, from which part to what. Because that is the easiest explanation. But nevertheless, I think that's also because the number of climatic factors which are happening, which are beyond our ponderables. But our capacity and capability has increased. And then I told them there were times, now of course we have scientific means to talk about uh, these forecasts, whether it's the Doppler radars, whether it's the automatic uh, stations, whatever you call. Earlier on, we didn't have. And I think uh, in the first few years after independence, I know whether they just looked at the skies and made a forecast. And uh, somewhere in the 50s, when Akashwani started a small slot, Mausam Kahal, that was twice a day bulletin. So it became almost a joke because the announcer would use a similar phrase every day. Ke dur dur tak Barish ke saath chinte padenge. Garaj ke saath. Yeah, Dr. Gupta. Dur dur tak garaj ke saath chinte padenge. Vaisi aam taur par mausam khush karayega. So you could predict it either ways and both ways you will be proved right. But we have actually graduated. So, and uh, I think more importantly, because if we don't uh, mention that, we and all others around us tend to forget. In the last eight years under Prime Minister Modi, we have enlarged ourselves many fold. The number of radars has gone up many fold. Mahapatra will sometimes, you know, spell that out in one of those meetings. Our uh, observatories, seismological repertories are now coming up in the B towns, which we didn't have earlier. We have set up uh, special installations in high prone rainfall areas, with Chennai, Mumbai. So all this happened in the last three, four years. And ocean science, of course, has received an attention. Deep sea mission I was talking about. And uh, the very recent, we've come out with Indian Antarctic Bill. In fact, this confusion of time happened because today we were to take it up in the Rajya Sabha. So the Raj, in Rajya Sabha, it would have come up somewhere around four o'clock or five o'clock. So that's why I conveyed to Dr. Ravi Chandran that I may not be available or we would have to alter the timings. But somehow the house didn't sit, so it's not taken up today. The Lok Sabha has already passed it. And what was a pleasant surprise to me is that usually news related to science is not reported, at least in the mainstream print media. So even in the course of making a science uh, presentation, if I abuse the other scientist, that gets reported. So my paper also gets reported. <laughs> but if I just confine myself to the paper, it doesn't get find any space. But it was a pleasant surprise that this uh, bill which was passed in the Lok Sabha received a wide coverage, even in the print media, across the country, vernacular media, even in Delhi. And when some of the newspapers, because they have also these days uh, the online versions, they have come out with special videos which we have tried to circulate on the social media yesterday and today about what it is all about. So at least it has generated curiosity. And that might, at least for the time being, give a scientific temper or add to the scientific temper of the nation. Then. Uh, he mentioned, though briefly, we've uh, embarked on a very ambitious project, which I'm sure once we succeed, which we are bound to, will give a huge visibility to the Ministry of Earth Sciences. 
ਦੀ ਸਵੱਛ ਸਵੱਛ ਸਾਗਰ ਸੁਰੱਖਿਅਤ ਸਾਗਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ which is a 75 day coastal clean up program 75 day 75 sea beaches 75 volunteers on each of the kilometer distance commemorating azadi mahotsav also 75 years and culminating on the in, in, in the on the day of the international coastal clean up day which happens to be the third saturday of february september and third september third saturday of september this year happens to be the 17th of september which is also incidentally the world day of the honorable prime minister who actually launched this swachhata campaign so i think this is a good omen all the things have been you know allied to each other or aligned to each other by a destined providence we didn't actually time it like that the international coastal day timed itself to fall on the day of the world day of the prime minister so it's again a tribute to the swachhata initiative taken by india so and and since the ministry of earth sciences is uh, coordinating it and organizing it has initiated it but the enthusiasm is so much that you have people from all sections of society you have students you have civil society members you have elders you have bureaucrats is virtually become a trend now to go to the sea beach and being to be photographed cleaning it just as yoga picked up especially on sundays so i think that will give the ministry some kind of a a, a unique pioneering credit of having initiated this and the other part is that since the ministry has involved a number of other ministries which are associated with the oceans and seas whether it's the jal shakti whether it's the fisheries whether it's environment there's about seven eight ministries of course the nodal ministries of sciences they are playing the major role but they are involving them which also lives up to the whole of government concept which is catching up globally so i think through this single campaign we are trying to live up to two or three new parameters which are emerging in the global work culture of the world and of course the blue economy as i said the prime minister spoke from about it from the rampers of red fort and now we are in the process of coming out with a policy which is the blue economy policy of india which again i think will give huge credit to the ministry of earth sciences because it's ironical that we didn't thought think of it earlier or the earlier ones didn't think of it we have a 7500 km long coastal line we have more than 1300 islands we have 12 major ports and more than 100 non major ports so i think there's a huge asset lying undiscovered which we have lined and once we it does this is going to be a ministry which is going to play a very important role in the future economy of india because when all the other sectors get saturated where do you then explore economy from so you look for the unsaturated sector so this is a not only unsaturated it's a hugely unexplored sector and uh, we have also set in through this ministry and the other ministries a culture of integrated working which is becoming increasingly essential in the mod, in the in the in the contemporary scientific projects endeavors initiatives and for the first time we are having every month a meeting of seven departments in the ministries of science all together the earth science the dst the the uh, biotechnology space atomic energy because space and atomic energy never joined these meetings so we have those them also and uh, now i yesterday requested the psa to have next meeting also including the mighty and the renewable energy because i said there is a lot of talk about hydrogen mission but who's actually you know spearheading it and for that we need to integrate so i'm sure that also is going to be a new trend for which this ministry will get credit and uh, very soon maybe after independence day we are going to have a two day science conference which will be represented by all the states of india the uts we thought we'll give it a different format it will not be something like you know 
everybody, every minister coming and delivering his speech and then ending up in a refreshment in Vigyan Bhavan, we'll actually make it an academic event. So, we'll divide it in different sessions, themes, depending on the scientific applications relevant to different states, and then engage them as we do in our academic conferences. And then follow it up also with the repetitors. So something of that sort. And it'll be out of Delhi so that you don't have, you're not in a hurry to rush home because you will have nowhere to go. So that I think will happen uh, somewhere next month. The Honorable Prime Minister has agreed to be there in one of the sessions. And uh, most of us will be trying to be there in all of the sessions, regardless of whether they are immediately relevant to us. So I think in, we are also, in a way, trying to introduce a new work culture in science fraternity. Because otherwise, as they say, science is too serious a subject to be left to scientists alone. <laughs> otherwise, it will never come up. So we are not going to leave it to scientists alone. And that is why I have been insisting that in most of our meetings, now we have also started including members of the Capacity Building Commission. So you tell us where you, what you need. And for the first time, many of you would be glad to know those who have joined us from other places. We've started having at least quarterly meeting with all the other ministries because they don't know what we have there to offer. So the, the I see what the mind knows. So they, the idea, the point is, if you don't know, then you ask for it, that look here right now. But if you don't know that you don't know, then you don't even ask. So, in Jal Shakti Ministry, we, and we spoke to them about this Halibond technology, which Dr. Tiwari has. They immediately lapped it up because they were looking for something like that, but they never knew that could be possible. Then, one of the ministries were looking for some Israel technology to clean the sewage water without realizing that we've already set in a plant in the Moti Bagh here. So, we have started now interacting individually with each of the ministries, which I'm sure because the next two decades is all progress going to be science-based, technology-based. So if it is going to be so, let us own it. Let it be owned by the scientific fraternity. So I'm sure the next few years will also be brighter for this ministry. And uh, when we come here on the next Founders Day, we'll have much more to pat ourselves for. Thank you very much and all the best.